Welcome to PCB Heaven Tech Labs. This is the third episode from the series LED Driving and Controlling Methods. In this episode we will analyze two variations from the previous circuit that we saw, the single transistor constant current driver with voltage divider bias. To understand how these new variations operate, it is important to know first how the previous circuit operates. So, if you don't, I strongly suggest that you watch the previous video first. The problem with the previous circuit is that the base voltage depends on the voltage divider ratio and the power supply voltage. If the power supply is changed, then the base voltage will change and therefore the current through the LED will change as well and we don't want this to happen. To solve this problem, we need something to maintain the base voltage stable, regardless of the supply voltage. The most logical and simple solution is to use a Zener diode. This is the first variation of the original circuit. The Zener diode is biased through this limiting resistor. As we know, the Zener diode maintains a predefined fixed voltage across its LEDs as long as the supply voltage is higher than the Zener voltage. Therefore, the base voltage and the emitter voltage of the transistor remain stable all the time, and thus the emitter and collector currents remain constant. Obviously, the output circuit analysis is exactly the same as the original circuit. As for the input circuit analysis, we only need to determine a base resistor RB. For this, we need to know two things, the minimum base current and the Zener current. We can estimate a base current from the collector current using the HFE hybrid parameter equation. Use the worst case scenario value for HFE, which is the minimum value provided by the manufacturer. As for the Zener diode current, we will use the minimum current required from the diode to regulate the voltage. 1 to 2 mA current is enough. Now we can apply Ohm's law to determine the base resistor. Do not forget to subtract the Zener voltage from the supply voltage, since no current flows within the Zener below this point. As for the supply voltage, you need to use the worst case scenario, which is the minimum voltage possible. If you do not know this voltage, then use 1.5 volts higher value than the Zener voltage. Let's see an example. Suppose that we want to provide 20 mA constant current to this LED and we want to maintain this current stable regardless of the power supply. I will be using a 5.1V Zener diode to achieve stable base voltage. The supply voltage will vary from 2 to 22 volts with the use of this LM317 voltage regulator. We will start building up the circuit from the transistor input which contains the Zener diode and the base resistor. To choose a base resistor, we will need to know the base current and the minimum Zener current. For the base current, we will use the collector current and the hybrid parameter HFE. Since we want to supply 20 mA to the LED, the collector current is 20 mA as well. The HFE for the worst case scenario is 100, so the base current is 0.2 mA. We will add another 1 mA to this value for the general diode to have proper voltage regulation. The total current at the input side is therefore 1.2 mA. We can now calculate the base resistor with the Ohm's law. To push this example to the limits, I will calculate the resistor for minimum voltage possible, which is about 1.5 volts higher than the Zener voltage, and that will be 6.5 volts. After some calculations, we find that the resistor must be 1166 ohms, so I will use a 1 kilo ohm resistor. 
For the output circuit, the emitter voltage will be 4.4 volts, so I will be using a 220 ohms resistor for the 20 mA current. It is important to calculate also the power that the base resistor and the Zener diode are called to dissipate at maximum supply voltage. The maximum current through the resistor can be calculated with the Ohm's law. From the supply voltage we subtract the Zener voltage and then we divide this value by the resistor value. Now we can apply the formula I square R to calculate the power dissipation on the resistor. The power dissipation on the resistor is 285.6 mW. Therefore, a 0.5 watts resistor must be used. As for the Zener diode, the power dissipation is calculated by multiplying the Zener voltage by the current through the base resistor. The power dissipation on the Zener is about 86 mW, so a typical 300 mW diode is enough. This circuit works very well for voltages from about 6.5 volts up to 22 volts. The current through the LED changes only 1 mA within this range. Theoretically, you can use Zener diodes with lower Zener voltage, but this might result in a more unstable circuit. Try to use a Zener diode with as higher voltage as possible. Another variation is to use two diodes connected in series, forward biased, instead of a Zener diode. The idea behind this is that each diode generates a voltage drop of approximately 0.7 volts. Two diodes in series will generate a total of around 1.4 volts voltage drop. Therefore, you can consider the two diodes as one Zener diode with Zener voltage of 1.4 volts. The analysis is then exactly the same as described in the circuit with the Zener diode before. The stability of the circuit is not very good, especially if the supply voltage has big variations. On the other hand, a small emitter voltage means that the power dissipation on the emitter resistor will be much smaller. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to visit my website for more interesting theories.